what kind of uh, kind of uh, identification would AI need to become? Or I don't know. I know this is a very very hard question, but um, um, to be aligned with maybe uh, with cellular life. Uh, there has been a specification that has been developed by Thomas Aquinas, which I find interesting. Uh, Thomas Aquinas is uh, the core philosopher of Catholicism. He um, didn't himself identify it that much as a philosopher because most of his ideas were taken from Aristotle and he just uh, reshaped them in his own view. But uh, there's genuine philosophy in there because he basically tried to define the specification for the religion, not in terms of the mythology that would be told to lay people to indoctrinate them with the religion, but what he thought is basically the heart of it. And uh, at the heart of it are, is a number of rules that an agent should obey. And these uh, shouldn't obey because the priest says so, or because God wants this of you, because, but because you can infer this by yourself rationally. And uh, so there are seven um, virtues, as he called them, but they're basically seven policies or uh, policy specifications that, this, that allow you to design their policies. And let me rephrase them in modern language. And so the, the first four are uh, practical policies that are obvious to uh, uh, every rational agent that thinks a little bit about it. And so no matter whether you are a, a sociopathic uh, crypto millionaire uh, in Silicon Valley who doesn't care about the fate of the world at all and only about their own um, wellness uh, and uh, life satisfaction, this is what you should be doing. And uh, these rules are, um, you should be um, regulating your own organism value, your internal regulation. So you should not uh, indulge in excesses that harm your body and, or your mind in a way that you cannot recover from. That you should uh, exercise uh, enough, but not too much. You should eat healthy, you should not eat too much. Uh, you shouldn't take drugs that harm you. Um, but you sh should not indulge in excesses. Even if these excesses create temporary pleasure, the temporary pleasure is uh, an artifact of the way in which your organism has implemented the seeking of the things that it needs. And uh, you might be in an environment that allows you to overindulge and you shouldn't. And um, Aquinas calls this temperance. And you should do things in moderation. And uh, the next thing is uh, you should optimize your uh, interpersonal relationships to keep them balanced. You need the books balanced. If you don't do this, there is going to be conflict, and this conflict is going to be costly. And this uh, sense of interpersonal balance, that you uh, try to live by principles that are negotiated with others and uh, give rise to harmonious interactions between others, this is what Aquinas calls justice, right? So you have uh, optimal organization within the agent that is temperance and optimal organization between the agents that he calls justice then you should uh, be willing to act on your models and uh, have skin in the games, right? So you should have a, a balance between exploration where you design the ideas on what you should be doing and uh, exploitation where you actually interact with the world and do things. And this is what he calls courage, right? Act on your best understanding, correct your models accordingly, uh, but uh, don't just build theories because that's cheap. Do things based on your understanding and understand that your models exist to do things in the world. And then uh, we have uh, goal rationality, pick the right goals and uh, pick the uh, best steps to achieve those goals based on your best rational understanding. And this is what he calls prudence. But the, the, uh, these terms are in some sense uh, overloaded because they are so deeply ingrained in our culture that we uh, interpret them as something that uh, the priest tells uh, the congregation and we should be doing this so the congregation likes us and the church likes us or whatever, or we are good people in the eyes of God, but this is not it. It's just something that you think about it. This is obviously what you should be doing if you are a rational adult. And uh, then we have the divine virtues. Divine means it's from God. Uh, if uh, I start to identify with uh, a, a collective agent, with uh, a system that is formed by the interaction of many, many people that are directed by a shared understanding of how things should be, and that uh, perceive this how things should be as more important than their individual well-being, at least in certain contexts, then you have an emergent next level agent. And that thing is a God in a way, right? As, as soon as it's implemented on the minds of the individuals and the individuals act to implement it, 
but then it becomes real because it's implemented now. And that thing might be implemented even in such a way that it's uh, sentient or even conscious. And it can be conscious by using the functionality of the individual brains that implement it. That in this state do not identify as a model of the individual organism, but as a model of the collective agent. Right? And so how can we build such a collective agent? How can we build a sentient civilization that we are part of that shapes the world into an environment that is benevolent and uh, worth living in. And uh, he suggested a bunch of rules for doing that. And first of all, you need uh, to commit to the existence of a collective agent. That you need to be willing to serve that collective agent, even at, if it happens at a cost to you. And this is what he calls faith. Faith is uh, an implementation of code. It's not a belief in the, uh, a representation. Right, it's, uh, it's actual code that runs on your brain and that shapes how you interact with reality. So you need to implement the software that facilitates the collective agent. And you need to be willing to implement this together with others that actually exist. It doesn't help if you serve some kind of abstract God that is not physically implemented or is not in your century or something like this. You need to do this with people around you so it happens. And uh, this discovery of shared sacredness, of uh, go sacred here just means a set of purposes that is more important than the or in, uh, uh, purposes of your own individual organism. Right? This, uh, the things that you're willing to sacrifice this individual organism for, that is the sacred. And you, uh, love is the discovery of sacredness in the other. And when you notice that you are uh, serving a shared purpose, you are interacting with each other in a non-transactional way. You don't expect to be paid for, for, by the other person uh, in return for helping you if you are trying to help them to achieve a shared sacred goal, right? Because where they are going, this is where the, you want the universe to go. So they are helping you if, if, you, uh, if they let uh, them help you to achieve that sacred goal, right? And this is this principle of working with the people around you to achieve that thing. This is what he calls love. And then you need to be willing to do this uh, in the absence of expected reward, because before that collective agent exists, it cannot reward you, right? This better world is not there before you make it. Maybe it takes a generation before it's implemented in a way that it really pays off and bears fruit. So in order to make that collective agent happen, you need to act uh, to create it before it is there. And this willingness to invest in something that doesn't exist in yet, this is what Aquinas calls hope. And so uh, we now have hope, faith, and love. And we have prudence, temperance, um, courage, um, and uh, justice. Right? So uh, not, don't lose the headlines too much because they are being poisoned by uh, a religion, uh, a dark ages, and uh, the way in which all these things have been cast through lots and lots of interpretations by priests. But if you look at what's actually written under the headlines, all these policies make sense, right? So if you now take this into the realm of AI, if you want to build an AI, uh, we should probably get this AI to uh, balance uh, its internal structure, to optimize its own internal regulation. We should also, uh, optimize the AI in such a way that it's inter optimizing its interaction with the world around it, with other agents. And it, uh, the AI should pick the right goals and the right steps to achieve the goals. And it should be willing to act and actually do things in the world and change the world. And then uh, if uh, the AI is not a single system that is basically a monotheist God and is going to conquer the entire world, which is possible, uh, but it, uh, if it wants to coexist with other agents, uh, then it should probably find harmonious structure with the other agents, which in the ideal case gives rise to a next level agent, some sentient meta agent that is the compound of the collaboration between that agent and other agents. And this deep collaboration means you have to have this commitment to the emergent structure. You have the willingness to interface with the systems around you to make it happen to the degree that they are willing to implement that thing. And you have to be willing to invest in it before it pays off, right? And now you can think of that as a specification for an AI.